So in this tutorial, we look at how you can make the double exposure scene look finished and professional, or how to go from this here to this. And how you make your double exposure scene look is really a matter of taste. But I would say that to really get the attention of your viewers is to use more layers, which is actually just defining your own style more. And of course, these extra layers should add something to the scene. Just some great effect is super, but even better if the layers also add some meaning. So what I, what I decided to add for this scene, looking at this, I got the idea that um, this man and stream inside his head and neck could uh, be like a bridge from uh, clouds above his head to the ground, uh, to earth or forest. And the meaning of it could be that water comes from the clouds through rain and pours down to earth so that the forest can grow. And then there could, and then there could be a hidden meaning that this man is in transformation or in flow, if you like. So what everyone sees in your scene is somewhat set by their minds but you can tell a whole story in a double exposure scene. And this is why we in Juicy Hats are so passionate about this technique. So let's get to work to get from this to this result. We created this double exposure effect in scene based composition. And now the textures and extra layers will come in scene final composition. So I'll open this one up. And uh, here you can see some effects are added by default. We can make the changes when we uh, select this first layer, controls. And you can see all the controls again on effect controls panel here. So the first two are front texture and pack texture, back texture. And uh, to be able to see something here, we need to put something in placeholders again. So for front texture, I will take up this opacity, so we'll see a change when I add something there. And you can access these placeholders from here on timeline. Double clicking on this will take you here. And uh, I have already put here uh, another video clip from our library. And to be able to see what I did to, to this is um, I just uh, positioned it a little bit differently and then scaled it down because this is a 4K footage to 53%. And then I created a mask that would cut off this upper part because um, what I wanted this to look like is to have trees on this uh, bottom part here. So I masked off the top. And then when we go back to the controls and look at back texture, I will take this opacity also up and then we'll go the same way to the placeholder from here on timeline. And then you can see I used here the same, um, the same clip that I used for front texture, but this time I just positioned it differently more to the upper part and scaled it a bit bigger so it won't look exactly the same. And I drag this back on timeline also, so the movement, but just a hint, movement isn't exactly the same. And then I created a mask to uh, mask out this bottom part, so mainly the puff smoke clouds are shown. And now when we go back to this final scene, you can uh, see both affecting our scene. So this is again uh, similar to the sandwich uh, effect that the back texture is on the back. And then comes your double exposure image. And then the front texture. And then uh, there are the other effects. Again, back to the controls layer and controls here. Uh, next is light streaks opacity. This takes down, uh, let's make the textures 
transparent so light streaks opacity can be from zero, 0 to 100 you can change the color for this and uh, better to use light or bright colors because this uses um, add mode so uh, next one is dust opacity these are these uh, small dust particles here you can change again the opacity or you can change also the color and if you're using uh, dark colors then uh, just the color change here but if you want to use a light color and then you also you can see them disappearing that's because the dust layer uses multiply blend mode if you're using light color for dust then you have to change the blend mode to add and of course then it would be necessary to have a dark background so they show on top of it and right now this dark background is only on top part because we have the transparency only on top part okay let's put this back and this one too and this back to multiply and the next control is uh, blur amount and this is uh, uh, edge blur I'll take back uh, the textures so you see how blur affects the overall look now when we take up the blur amount to release really some high value like this you can see the edges are blurred and uh, this give this gives this dreamy uh, look and centers the viewers attention to your um, sharp parts of the scene and you can define also uh, change this which parts are blurred when you go to this last layer of, in this composition double click on it and here's a blur map so you can create your uh, white and black blur map in after effects yourself or in photoshop wherever you feel comfortable or you can make the changes to this one just by dragging around these um, uh, ramp controls so to change uh, how much of the uh, effect is um, and where it is okay back to the controls and uh, then the last one in effect controls is use text this is just to turn off the text layer if you don't want to use it or back on and then if you want to uh, put in your own text and animate it double click on this text layer and here you can uh, do whatever uh, you need to and this guide layer is just to uh, warn you off edges but you can go over this uh, and then just check that your camera still um, moves so that your text layer is visible and not off screen so text on off from here and then the next are color controls and uh, here are um, four of them uh, light gradient opacity when we put this to 100 you can see it's like a light cost and you can change the colors for these two uh, when you click on shy button here this one then the hidden layers are revealed and you can then find this light color gradient layer here and uh, on effect controls you can change these colors for example to something a lot more colorful and get some really great and interesting results and the same way if we take this down and instead use dark gradient opacity stronger this is much um, more dynamic and uh, uh, darker and then you can the same way uh, change the colors finding this dark color gradient layer here and uh, let's change this to red so you can see how you can create pretty awesome results with just a few clicks using these ready-made layers and take this back 
let's put a shy we have smaller number of layers visible and um, then there's black and white opacity this is just what it says but it only affects the layers that are below this black and white layer and uh, which layers are you can see when again the shy button and uh, BW is the black white layer so you can see it uh, right now it affects the double exposure image this and then uh, the back texture image and then the background image so uh, if you want to have this black and white effect over uh, the whole scene you can freely drag this around and change change the layer order so it affects everything in your scene and there's a no restraint to this just drag this around and the other uh, the same thing goes to the other layers you can mix up the layer order if you want to and have some different kind of results then so uh, then there's background this is uh, dark or light option but right now uh, we have back texture if we take it down the opacity you can see the dark background here and right now it's only on the upper part but if you have a more transparency in your double exposure scene here so for example if this man's silhouette is cut through, uh, out and we are using alpha mode then of course the whole background will be dark like this so let's put this back to light and we don't want the light streaks for this so we are aiming for this scene and how to get there uh, we have already uh, put in our back texture and front texture and changed the values here so they are uh, stronger and i will take down the black and white opacity we don't use these so this is more similar to what we are trying to gain and the blur may be a bit smaller if at all I'll put this to 30 okay so basically we are there but um, yeah you can see that this double exposure uh, image or part here is really um, high contrast and I would like this to be like more soft uh, so this is a uh, done by changing the blend modes which gives much more options to us so I used soft light for this one and you can see it nearly disappears very dreamy but a bit too transparent so I can then just duplicate this double exposure image and I also will add a curves effect to this top layer to uh, add even more contrast yeah like that mm -hmm. like this so i think that that's it so i just uh, i achieved this uh, by changing changing the blend mode and then adding another duplicate of this layer and now I will turn this into a really minimalistic scene just to show you how easy it is to change the overall look of the scene and we will turn this back to normal and we will turn off this second layer and let's take away all the textures and make this really minimalistic like this and that's it here you have white background minimalistic some little effects so um, you can create uh, the point of this is that you can create your own unique style with this 
or if you have something in mind and have a, like a visual reference to where you are aiming, you can achieve this uh, with this one using these uh, built-in effects and, and layers. Okay, and to the next example, how to use this final scene. 